Welcome to section 15 of viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing human T lymphotropic virus, or HTLV, which you can see right here. This is also sometimes referred to as human T cell leukemia virus. This scene takes place back during the time of castles and knights. As you can see front and center, there's a noble knight with a two-sided flail shaped like a T. The T-shaped flail in the knight's hand should help you remember that this is an image about human T lymphotropic virus. Now we've added this well to the scene with a pulley that helps lift the pail of water up. Pulleys work by someone exerting a force in one direction, which then causes the pail of water to move in the opposite direction. In other words, it moves in a retrograde fashion relative to the force. So we'll be using a pulley to represent retroviruses, and HTLV is a retrovirus. Retroviruses have the enzyme reverse transcriptase, which allows the virus to convert its RNA into DNA, which can then be integrated into the host genome. Okay, before we get too far into the image, pay close attention to the background. Notice that the sunset is a warm pink color, which means that HTLV is an RNA virus. Next, notice that we've added a line of people who are waiting to get water out of the well. This is a rough time of year, so the townspeople rely on the king's support for water. Because the water supply is so valuable, the king has wisely placed a loyal knight to protect and distribute the water. The line of people waiting for water should help you remember that HTLV is a linear virus. Also, we won't show any parallel lines in this image, so you can assume that HTLV is single-stranded. So the RNA structure is linear, and single-stranded. We also won't show any naked people in this image, so you can assume that HTLV is enveloped. Next, notice that we've included a mirror on the table towards the front of the image. A mirror creates a reflection of an existing image, so you could say it creates a copy of whatever is looking at it. Therefore, the mirror should help you remember that HTLV has two distinct copies of RNA. We've also shown some icosahedral shaped containers that are full of water. This is where the water is stored as buckets of water are drawn out of the well. The shape of these unique containers should help you remember that HTLV has an icosahedral shaped capsid. Now you can see that we've added a rainbow to the background. Just like in our other images, the positive happy feeling of a rainbow should help you remember that HTLV is a positive sense virus. Now we've shown a ribbon on the handle of the knight's T-shaped flail. If you look closely, you can see that it's covered in blood. Recall that the Cancer Hope ribbon is used as a symbol for cancer. The blood on the ribbon should help you remember blood cancer. And the fact that the ribbon is on a T-shaped flail should help you remember T-cell leukemia lymphoma. So HTLV can cause adult T-cell leukemia lymphoma. Adult T-cell lymphoma is more prevalent in Japan, West Africa, and the Caribbean. So to help you remember this, we've shown a Japanese samurai guy, a West African guy, and a pirate from the Caribbean in the line waiting for water. It's also associated with IV drug use. To help you remember this, we've shown several medicinal vials and containers on the table. So medicinal vials for IV drug use. Next, notice that we've shown an old guy with a cane in the back of the line. This guy should help you remember that HTLV can cause slowly progressive weakness. Hopefully this makes sense. The use of a cane implies that the person is weak. So old guy with a cane, for slowly progressive weakness. Now notice that we've shown the West African guy with a bottle of milk in his hand. He's almost out of milk, so he brought this container to be filled up with water at the well. Milk is notoriously high in calcium, so we've shown the milk container here to help you remember that adult T-cell lymphoma can cause hypercalcemia. One of the townsmen got pretty upset about waiting in line and being subservient to the king, so he attempted to take down this knight. However, you can see that he wasn't very successful. The knight pulled out his T-shaped flail and whacked him in the head leaving a very prominent skin lesion on his face. This skin lesion should help you remember that adult T-cell lymphoma causes cutaneous lesions. Now you can also see why the knight's ribbon around his flail is covered in blood. Some of the blood from this rebel's face landed on the ribbon. The reason the knight acted so swiftly and with lethal force was because of the threat that the rebel posed with his axe. If you look closely at the rebel's axe, you'll notice that it's shaped kind of like lungs. The lung shape should help you remember that adult T-cell lymphoma can cause pulmonary infiltrates. Finally, if you look closely at the well, you'll notice that it's made from a bunch of bones. The bones here should help you remember that adult T-cell lymphoma can cause lytic bone lesions. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 44-year-old male comes to the office due to a rash. His medical history is significant for recent travel to the Caribbean for a business-related trip. Physical examination reveals a generalized papular rash and lymphadenopathy. Laboratory analysis is significant for hypercalcemia and an elevated white blood cell count. Imaging reveals lytic bone lesions. The pathogenesis of this patient's condition is thought to be due to constitutive activation of the JAK-STAT pathway and inactivation of the tumor suppressor TP53. 
Which of the following is most likely true regarding this patient's condition? A. It's caused by a single-stranded linear RNA virus. B. It's caused by a single-stranded linear DNA virus. C. It's caused by a single-stranded circular RNA virus. Or D. It's caused by a single-stranded circular DNA virus. Okay, hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient has adult T-cell leukemia lymphoma. We can deduce this based upon his recent travel to the Caribbean, a rash, hypercalcemia, lytic bone lesions, and abnormalities of signaling pathways that are classically associated with cancer, including the JAK STAT pathway and TP53. So the correct answer is A, it's caused by a single-stranded linear RNA virus. B is incorrect because the only single-stranded DNA virus is parvovirus, and this is typically associated with aplastic crises in sickle cell disease, not with adult T-cell leukemia lymphoma. So B is incorrect. C is describing the RNA structure of bunyaviruses, and these are not associated with adult T-cell leukemia lymphoma. D is a red herring because there isn't a single-stranded circular DNA virus. Remember, DNA viruses are all double-stranded except parvovirus, and the DNA viruses that are circular are also double-stranded. So D is incorrect. From the image, recall that the line of people right here should help you remember that HTLV is linear, and the pink background right here should help you remember that the virus is an RNA virus. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about HTLV.